What's going on guys, my name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video we'll be comparing the new Pebble Time Steel to the Apple Watch. The Pebble Time Steel is the high-end version of the Pebble Time smartwatch that was released a couple of months ago, and if you missed my unboxing of it, I'll leave a link on the screen, but I'm excited to see how these two smartwatches stack up against each other given just how nice the Pebble Time Steel is compared to the standard Pebble Time, and hopefully this video will help you decide what you'll be spending your hard-earned money on, so let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing we'll be checking out is the hardware. The Apple Watch 42mm sports a 1.5 inch AMOLED display at 312 by 390 resolution and 302 pixels per inch. It's covered in either Ionex glass or sapphire crystal depending on which model you get and of course it's a capacitive touchscreen. The casing consists of either 7000 series aluminum or stainless steel again depending on what model you get and the rear is where you'll find the charging area as well as a heartbeat sensor for fitness tracking. The Apple Watch is controlled by the digital crown and another small button on the side and by the touchscreen and although the touchscreen seems impossible possibly small to use effectively, the combination of that and the buttons makes it pretty nice to use. The Pebble Time Steel, on the other hand, has a 1.25 inch 64 color e-paper display with 144 by 168 resolution at 182 pixels per inch. The screen is covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and has no touchscreen capabilities, although the screen itself is always on and does have a backlight to help it in low light. The casing is composed of stainless steel which gives it a nice weight and high quality feel with a small connector on the back for the the charger. Because the steel doesn't have a touchscreen, the watch is controlled by a number of buttons on the side of the watch that act as the up, down, select, and back buttons. It isn't the worst thing in the world, but given the fact that pretty much everything is touchscreen now, it does feel a little behind the times. The next thing we should take a look at are the band options. Apple offers a number of different bands for the Apple Watch at a range of prices with a few different models, materials, and colors. The standard Apple Watch Sport band is a special floral elastomer, which is basically a fancy word for rubber, and it's soft and feels not only nice on the wrist, but pretty high quality. The downside to the Apple Watch is that the band connector is proprietary, so it only fits Apple Watch specific bands unless you do what I did and get a third-party watch connector adapter, and you can use that to connect any watch band of your choice. The Pebble Time Steel offers two different band styles in three different colors, again depending on which model that you purchase. The standard leather band is kind of a soft felt material on the outside and genuine leather on the inside, and is about as simple as you can get. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the color, but the nice thing is with a Pebble Time Steel, you can actually use any 22mm watch band you'd like. The connector is the same as any other watch, so when the original Pebble band starts to look gnarly and used up like mine does, you can easily swap it out. One of the most uneven comparisons we have is the software on the two devices, and I think this is where people really start to dislike the Pebble. Apple's watchOS is a rich and fluid experience utilizing the touchscreen, all of the buttons, and force touch really well. It isn't as intuitive as other Apple products, but you start to figure it out eventually, and the apps themselves have a fair amount of depth to them and almost feel like iPhone apps at times. The UI feels polished, and although it does lag or feel a bit sluggish at times, it's more or less exactly the high-class operating system you'd expect from Apple. The Pebble Times OS is probably why most people call it a Toys R Us or Fisher Price watch, and although I don't necessarily agree with them, it really does leave a lot to be desired. Between the 64 color display, the goofy animations, and the bare minimum feel, it just isn't what you'd expect from today's tech. Is it terrible? No, not really. And to people who want the bare minimum or absolute basics, I think it would really suit them well. Both watches require an iPhone app to sync with, and the Pebble's iPhone app is pretty nice and really easy to use. You can use the app to install watch faces and applications, and there are a decent amount of both to choose from. Installing a new watch face is pretty much instantaneous, and the customizability you have is really great overall. The Apple Watch app is pretty much the hub for the watch itself, as all of the settings for the watch and for all the apps you have are installed there. In a way, it's almost an inconvenience convenience having so much stuff in the app just because if you want to change pretty much anything at all, even the basic stuff, you have to go through the app itself, and it's probably more complicated than it needs to be. However, if you want to change your watch face, you can only do that from the watch itself, and you can only choose from Apple's pre-installed ones, at least for now, which is kind of a huge bummer. But the app selection you have is obviously unmatched. Not only are there a lot of apps you already have installed compatible with the watch, there are a lot of 
have apps that are more or less watch specific, which are really nice. One of the most important aspects of a smartwatch is how it handles notifications. And again, I think this is where the Apple Watch shines. Notifications from any app you choose show up and you can decide how to handle them. For example, you can respond to text messages, view emails, and even answer phone calls. Now you can view a lot of the notifications that come through your phone on the Pebble Time Steel, but you can't really do much with them. You can't reply to messages aside from using your voice, and you can't take phone calls. You can really only check out a list of notifications and manage them, which again is isn't terrible, but kind of limits the overall functionality and usefulness of the watch. The biggest feature the Pebble Time Steel has over the Apple Watch is battery life. The Steel packs a 10 day battery life, even with the always on display, which is pretty crazy and is unmatched really by any kind of device at all. The Apple Watch has at least a full day of battery life depending on how much you use it and can maybe be stretched to a day and a half or even two days, but it will most likely need to charge every single night. You do have power reserve mode of course, but that completely limits its functionality. Of course, the last big difference between the two smartwatches are the price. While the Pebble Time Steel starts at a fairly affordable $249 and goes up to $299 if you get the stainless steel band, the Apple Watch Sport starts at $399 for the 42mm and climbs up by hundreds and hundreds of dollars depending on the bands you get or if you get the stainless steel Apple Watch or even the Apple Watch Edition. Obviously everyone will have their own opinions about the devices, but I wanted to give you a video just to kind of compare them overall and allow you guys to decide for yourself what you think. Other aspects like availability, compatibility, and personal tastes and preferences will obviously affect how you compare them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. Also be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.